How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video as we're awaiting the news from the CMA. We do have a bit of news from the CMA in terms of their progress. We have Bobby Cottage talking about his future at the CMA. We have some antitrust laws that are being, you know, kind of brought into play and a few other little tidbits that are just going around. So I thought I'd collate all of that information, talk about it. We also have like a kind of a multi-tweet from someone who's really not an analyst or anything, but he's pretty much echoing a lot of what I was thinking and how I feel about this and pretty much how a, a lot of people who kind of understand what is going on is actually uh, thinking, feeling, and kind of understanding on where this is going with the CMA. Because I know a lot of people are worried that the CMA is trying to screw Microsoft over, but it's far from it. If anyone is trying to screw this, you know, this deal over, it would probably be the FTC, who despite, you know, <laughs> putting the white flag up, is still, from what I'm hearing as of late last night, still kind of rummaging at ways to see if they can get their own back at Microsoft, so to say. And they're still looking at ways to try and complicate things, even though they're not actually uh, officially ruling anything out. So uh, they came out saying that the in-house adjudication, which was for the 2nd of August, was off the table. Um, and they even had like a whole hearing saying that we've drawn from it. But there's now rumors saying that it could be back. Well, We'll find out soon enough if and when that is going to happen. There's still at least uh, 12, 13, 14 days for that. So who knows? But the FTC just doesn't seem to know when to quit. But with the CMA, I'm starting to see a pattern here. And it looks like they are actually trying to go down the right path. They are staying consistent with what they're saying. And in order to save face, I guess, Microsoft is being quite... Uh, generous in the way they're playing ball because they're trying to not humiliate the cma like they did the ftc and i think the cma will appreciate this when future mergers do come along so with that said i think it's time to go to our favorite part of the show and uh the first place to start i guess will be of course bobby cottage and his future and what better way than to hear it from himself Right, so we have this here, and I've actually timestamped it, so we can just get right into it. And he gets asked, you know, what's your future at Microsoft? Are you going to stay there? Are you leaving? Uh, let's hear what he has to say. Um, what about your future? I mean, you're under contract, I believe, until April of next year. And so you will stay during what will be the integration, I guess, assuming this deal does close, let's call it, in the next 45 days or so. Yeah, I've committed to Microsoft for as long or as little as they need me to help with the integration. You know, I've been doing this for 32 years. I care deeply about the people who work at our company and, you know, our company. And so whatever I can do to ensure the integration goes smoothly, I'm going to do. What are you going to so as you can see, he's pretty much, you know, April 2024 is his cutoff date. He'll be there until, you know, this deal kind of... Uh, you know, the, the transitional period is sorted. Obviously, there is going to be a transition period where everything has to be handed over to whoever's going to be in charge. A lot of people think it's going to be Sarah Bond. It's, it quite well could be Sarah Bond, and I actually think Sarah Bond would do actually a really, really fantastic job in this position. But, you know, say what you will about Bobby and his uh, shady morals and, you know, well, zombified morals, I guess you could say. He knows how to run a business. He took Activision from a company that pretty much had nothing all the way up to a $70 billion company and uh, is walking away with $400 million in, in, you know, as a golden parachute. So is he a nice person? Not really. Not at all. Especially from what we've heard. But does he know how to run a business? He does. So to not tap into that and have that smooth transition would be really, really silly in my opinion. So I think that's pretty much the best they can do for now. Next, we have this one over here. And I guess uh, Sarah Cardell basically was being interviewed with uh, 
with Sky News, and they were talking about supermarkets, but then the question about Xbox and you know Microsoft and uh, Activision Blizzard deal came up, and this is what she had to say. Obviously, a very busy time for you. You initially moved to block Microsoft's taking of Activision Blizzard. It now looks as though you've compromised with, with the parties involved here. Some people are accusing you of having caved into pressure from Microsoft. What, what do you say to them? I say we certainly haven't compromised. Our decision to prohibit the deal stands. Uh, we understand from Microsoft that they would like to put forward proposals to us to restructure the deal, potentially re-notifying that deal uh, to address our competition concerns. If they do that, we will consider those, those restructured proposals carefully. But anything that they put forward to us will need to fully and comprehensively resolve our concerns. Our position on that hasn't changed. And what's the time scale here, Sarah? When do you expect Microsoft to come up with some sort of revision to their proposals? So we're waiting for those proposals to come to us. We've agreed with Microsoft uh, a stay on the litigation, which means that we can focus on understanding whether it is possible for them to provide a restructure that addresses our concerns. The ball is very much in their court at the moment. All right, Sarah, we have to leave it there. Appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. And so that's where we're at with this. So what she's essentially saying is they're still waiting for the legal documents from Microsoft to lay out the plans, lay out what the what the structural remedies are, and to basically uh, provide them with the information they need in order to be able to investigate. So the sooner Microsoft can get their, their information to them, that is, they can make a start. They are saying that they haven't wavered, they haven't compromised. This essentially shows that they are still... You know they're not wavering and they're not weak they're still you know standing toe to toe with microsoft and i think this goes hand in hand with microsoft trying to make them look stronger than they are because microsoft could have easily went to that cat tribunal on the 28th of july and won there i i can't see in any world i mean even the judge said the market definition that you're actually providing you know the honorable judge marcus smith he told um the f the CMA lawyers on the day when there was the, the CMC hearing that the market definition that they are proposing is not it and it doesn't make sense and therefore it would from just based on what he said would have been thrown out and if that gets thrown out Microsoft win by default so Microsoft could have won this quite easily but it seems Microsoft wants to keep the UK regulators happy because my assumption is they have another few companies, maybe not publishers or major publishers. I'm assuming maybe like Atlas, maybe Sega. Um, they've got a couple publishers up on their sleeve that they are looking to purchase. And they've probably already started preliminary talks in the background and they want the CMA support. So by turning around to the CMA and saying, look, we're going to rub your back. You rub our back. We're not, we're making you look strong, but we expect that uh, kindness in return you know quid pro quo as it is and it kind of comes uh nicely into a segue on this bit here because it was something that uh sarah cardell actually said in oh well her lawyer you know the cma lawyers said where they said that what they're worried about is you know approving the deal based on remedies and then Microsoft going back and changing it because those structural remedies weren't in place. The CMA aren't interested in remedies. They want structural change. And as you can see here, like Khan, Cardell is skeptical of extracting promises from companies, which is what Microsoft was offering, not to engage in certain practices like Microsoft were promising not to do as a condition of regulatory approval. She says such agreements known as behavioral remedies which is what Microsoft were offering, don't solve the underlying problems and pose practical concerns, which it can, because even though it's a behavioral remedy, Microsoft can just basically wipe that clean because the deal's been approved and say, right, I'm going back to the ways I want. She prefers requiring so-called structural remedies, which is basically divestiture, such as forcing merging companies to sell off certain parts of their business to maintain competition. Again, divestiture i don't think there's any sort of fundamental philosophical difference with khan or the european commission executive vice president margef vestager she says i think we probably all have in common 
that we are seeking to use our antitrust toolkit in a way that really works to deliver outcomes. Now, that's what I understood from this. She's basically seeking structural remedies that are permanent, stuff that Microsoft can't take back on a whim. They would have to undergo uh, legal challenges in order to get those back. But, you know, our resident Florian here, nothing to add to my prior commentary. I believe the CMA is being principled, but constructive. The two attributes, the antitrust and the CMA, have never been mutually exclusive. So even though they existed, they're kind of working side by side. It is what it is. Before we continue, if you made it this far, do consider leaving a sub. You've made it this far. You're enjoying the content. It helps me get to that 3000 milestone that I'm going for right now. And obviously it helps my video get noticed and given out via the YouTube algorithm. So it's a win-win situation. You get more content. I get more exposure. Channel grows. We can make more content for you to enjoy. Right. On with the actual content. Um, but it was this speech here. Forget about the laughing emoji. If the CMA actually believed the deal was bad and also believed they had leverage, they would not be negotiating with Microsoft right now for a settlement. And that is 100% correct. If the CMA knew that they had a smoking gun, they would have told Microsoft to piss off. You know this, I know this, everyone knows this. The fact that they don't have that smoking gun means that they are, and they know that they would have lost in court because, you know, Judge Marcus Smith actually said that they would lose in court because they don't really, their market definition doesn't really work. And that's pretty much their whole case. Um, renegotiating is probably the way forward. Remember, they have negotiated, they could have renegotiated prior to the FTC loss and the countless other regulatory agencies approving, but they didn't. And even the judge asked, it's kind of a, a bit weird that after the FTC lose, you kind of immediately jumped in and wanted to negotiate. And the CMA said that, you know, this was not the case. The two was just a coincidence. And I'm like, sure, bro. Sure. Everyone knows that the moment the FTC lost, the CMA stood up and said, oh, shit. Shit's just got real. Get Microsoft on the phone. We need to negotiate because we're about to lose this and get humiliated in the process. That is exactly what happened. There is no, oh, it had nothing to do with it. It had everything to do with it. Now the CMA has very little leverage to negotiate a deal with Microsoft, which it does, because at this point, Microsoft would be willing to ignore them and divest partially from the UK market, which they can by pulling Activision out of the UK market, Microsoft can still operate, and then, you know, for a subsidiary, release their games. They would have to be very, very careful at that point because the CMA would be onto the, they'd pretty much hire a whole fucking department just to look at them to make sure they ain't making a single mistake, because if they do, they'd be fined 10% of their total earning revenue. The CMA was always a bad faith actor. I kind of agree with this, they could have negotiated remedies to their concerns, but their concerns were never legit. Of course it wasn't. It was never really legit. And as Marcus Judge, uh, you know, Marcus Smith, the judge said, you would have lost. And they, he hinted at Microsoft multiple times. If you want this case to go on on the 28th, there's a really, really high probability that you're going to win. They, 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 they almost spelt it out to the, uh, to beard on the day and they still were wanting to stay and the CMA never cared about remedies. They simply wanted to kill the deal. This again is 100% true. All the CMA is doing now is trying to avoid Microsoft taking actions that can lead to political backlash, which can result in real changes in how the CMA operates. This is true. Now I will say like, I've actually been doing a lot of reading on the CMA and the work they do in the background. They actually do a lot of good work and they're currently doing like really, really, um, uh, important work in supermarkets and fuel prices in the UK that have actually had real change and real effect on real lives. And it's, it, it's, uh, one of those things where in this situation, I really do believe that the CMA got so caught up with Lena Khan and her FTC that they kind of got spiraled in with her, you know, her, her crusade and now kind of don't have a way out. And they can't really say we tagged along with the FTC. It, it, it's a mess. Uh, honestly, it is in the interest of a country to negotiate good terms through competition and market. Blocker deal is really the good way of doing things. There are a lot of instruments that could use and block is the last. Absolutely. That's why Microsoft is choosing that route. 
But make no mistake, if the CMA attempts to overplay their current leverage, they will be ignored and they know it, and Microsoft will close. If the CMA tries to say, right, well, we're going to postpone this to October or past October, and because we need another six months for investigation, Microsoft are just going to close the deal and say, right, we tried to play ball, we tried to play fair, it's, it's done, game over. We'll close and we'll deal with the consequences after. And the CMA could have renegotiated from the very beginning for remedies, but they chose not to. And that is the key thing here. The CMA didn't even want to talk to Microsoft. They, you know, Microsoft apparently, you know, their legal team went to the CMA headquarters and weren't even allowed in the building. That's how, you know, pathetic the CMA was. But now because they know they're about to get completely and utterly humiliated and after the FTC in emphatic fashion lost multiple times in, in the US, they are literally alone. And now they know that if they want to proceed and actually save some face, they kind of have to, uh, they kind of have to go forward and work with Microsoft, but they're doing it in a way where it's looking like it's on their terms. And by it being on their terms, it looks like they have the control and they're making Microsoft bend the knee. And it looks like Microsoft is more than willing to go through this because let's face it, they've said multiple times that the xCloud service is actually bleeding them money. So we have this over here as well. And I know people over here are kind of getting scared and upset. Britain's antitrust regulator is waiting for Microsoft to submit a modified deal structure to buy a Call of Duty maker Activision Blizzard. It's boss Sarah Cardell said on Thursday. And uh, this link just opens up this one over here. And it reads London Reuters via picksuite.com. Britain's antitrust regulator is waiting for Microsoft to submit a modified deal structure to buy Call of Duty maker Activision Blizzard. It's boss Sarah Cardell said on Thursday. We understand from Microsoft that they would like to put forward proposals to us to restructure the deal. Again, this is the divestiture part, potentially renotifying the deal, basically a uh, kind of putting a new deal, a new claim in, in place uh, for the merger to address our competition concerns, she told Sky News. If they do that, we will consider those restructured proposals carefully. The CMA blocked the 69 billion deal in April over concerns about its impact on the competition in the cloud gaming market. So by divesting the cloud and the proposal that Microsoft's putting forward, which is to divest, and I think the biggest delay here is finding an appropriate suit to actually handle the X cloud infrastructure, because currently uh, the majority of the people, what everyone is expecting is going to go to EE. It could go to someone else as well, but EE is the, you know, kind of like the, hot candidates right now where all analysts are expecting it's going to go to them, especially considering EE actually, you know, when you sign up to a brand new, con you know, a new phone deal or a new uh, broadband deal that, or a new fiber optic bill, they give you one year's uh, Game Pass Ultimate as part of the deal. So it kind of works hand in hand with that. It has been left increasingly isolated in the in opposition after US regulator the FTC failed to block in court last week, and the CMA has taken the unprecedented step of reopening talks. Because previously they didn't have to reopen talks, they were in f pole position with the FTC. But as soon as the FTC went down, they took the unprecedented. To say that the FTC's decision had no you know uh, bearing on them wanting to reopen talks. Is a whole load of horse crap. Cardell said any new proposal put forward by Microsoft would need to fully and comprehensively resolve our concerns, but it actually means four to six weeks of investigation. And well, that is pretty much all we have for this video. If you have enjoyed the video, do consider leaving a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. It really helps me uh, get closer to that 3000 subs. So thank you so much for your continued support. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks so much. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Bobby Cottage leaving, uh, the CMA position, the actual uh, weakness of the CMA, even though they're trying to look strong in the face of everything. It's a pretty interesting one, right? Well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend.